The story of Rahab continues from Joshua chapter 2. Before the spies lay down for the night, she, Rahab, went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land, and that a great fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and my mother, my brothers and my sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Our lives for your lives, the men assured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. So Rahab let them down by a rope through the window, for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. She said to them, Go to the hills so the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourselves there three days until they return, and then go on your way. Now the men had said to her, This oath you made us swear will not be binding on us, unless when we enter the land you have tied this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you have brought your father and mother, your brothers, and all of your family into your house. If any of them go outside your house into the street, their blood will be on their own heads. We will not be responsible. As for those who are in the house with you, their blood will be on our head if a hand is laid on them. But if you tell what we are doing, we will be released from the oath you made us swear. Agreed, she replied. Let it be as you say. So she sent them away and they departed, and she tied the scarlet cord in the window. Please pray with me. <laughs> Dear God, let these words burrow themselves deep into our hearts and change us from the inside out with your love. Amen. Well, if you've been watching the news at all or reading the headlines over the past few years, you know that the topic of immigration and foreigners has been a significant campaign issue in our country. And much has been said, often negative, about the character and the intentions and the motivations of people who have been coming to the United States. Now, this distrust of foreigners is nothing new. It has a long history that can be theorized to go back to our evolutionary development. Back in the Stone Age, different tribes of people would be in conflict with each other and would often fight over scarce natural resources. Maybe home sites that were naturally defensible or places that had good water or had fertile land or pasture. There seems to be something that is genetically hardwired in us that is cautious around people that we do not know. We see this all the time with our children. There's a good evolutionary reason why your child does not want to leave mom and dad to go into the North Kent Presbyterian Church nursery with our loving and qualified and background check volunteers. That child is wary of strangers. They are hesitant to trust people that they do not know. They are afraid they may get hurt by those folks that they are not familiar with. Now, this healthy fear of strangers many times continues on through adolescence and into adulthood. And without deliberate and systemic attempts to meet and get to know people from other cultures, 
It can perhaps lead to suspicion or stereotypes of other peoples. At its worst, it can lead to racism. And at times, it can lead to sort of an ethnocentrism and an indifference to the culture and lives of others. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about foreigners. And it encourages us over and over again to welcome immigrants as strangers. One of the places that it does that is in our scripture lesson for today, where we find a woman who gives us three very important lessons about how to interact with those who are different, those who are strangers to us. Now, the first thing to notice about Rahab is that she is not afraid of the Israelite strangers. Perhaps it is because of Rahab's profession as a prostitute, a woman who welcomes men of all types into her arms, that maybe allows her to get beyond the normal human fear of strangers to allow these two spies from Israel into her home. She's not acting toward the strangers like most people in her town would especially regarding that they are enemy soldiers. <coughs> Rahab speaks about how the military prowess of the Israelites have inspired fear among her people. Twice she describes her own countrymen's hearts as melting in fear because they knew that the Hebrew soldiers were coming toward them as an invading army. <coughs> Yet Rahab doesn't allow this fear to control her actions. Instead, she overcomes her fears and offers the strangers a welcome. She chooses hospitality over fear. Now, our congregation is also doing something very similar with our commitment to be a part of Family Promise. A few of you have told me some of your fears about strangers coming in and sleeping in our church building. There are worries about everything from potentially cleaning up blood or vomit from a sick kid to maybe even being attacked in the night by strangers sleeping down the hall from you. Others of you are more worried about the wear and tear on the church building or maybe getting sued for someone slipping and falling or hurting themselves, maybe on the new playground. But I would like to say to all of North Kent Presbyterian, it is perfectly normal to be afraid of people that you do not know. As humans, we're kind of wired to do that. But like Rahab, we need to move beyond our fears and get to a place of hospitality. We need to allow ourselves to think of the family promise folks as our guests and not just strangers. We need to also remember that while it may be frightening for us to have strangers in our building, it is much more frightening for those who do not know us, for those who have never been to this place. We can choose to either stay trapped and frozen by our fears, or we can allow ourselves to open our hearts and our building with a sense of hospitality. Now, our understanding of normal 21st century welcome or hospitality is much more modest than the hospitality that is practiced by Rahab in our scripture today. Her actions are indicative of the practice of ancient Near East hospitality, which was when you invited someone into your home, you protected them and treated them as if though they were part of your own family. You not only provided them with shelter and food, but you were expected to protect them from those who would do them harm. So when the authorities of her town came to her house seeking out the two spies, Rahab lies for the Israelites. She misdirects the guards to look outside the walls of Jericho. This was a huge risk on her part. If Rahab had been caught harboring the spies, there is no doubt in my mind she would have been imprisoned and then executed. Doing what Rahab did was treason against her government. But she did not just stop with her misdirection of the guards. She could have stopped with just that and then allowed the two spies to go their own way after dark. But Rahab also 
chooses to take a risk, to make a bargain with the two spies in order to save herself and her family. Rahab takes that huge risk to, success, to suggest that they make a deal to spare her, her parents, her brothers, and her sisters, and her nieces and nephews too. Rahab takes a risk to deepen the relationship that she has with these strangers in order to bless and save her family. Now, we too, as a church, have a choice on if we're going to take a risk or not. It would be perfectly fine for us as a congregation to act as sort of a hotel for our family promised guests and to make sure that they all have comfortable Sunday school rooms to sleep in and a continental breakfast and make sure that the plumbing and the electricity all stay operational, just as any hotel or hospitality providing organization would do. But what would require more, what would require a risk from us would be offering up the opportunity for our guests to get to know us, perhaps over a puzzle or a board game. I know that some of our members are already planning on bringing in some craft projects, and there are some who are imagining putting on a video and making a big batch of popcorn for everyone to share. But others are more hesitant. They're not planning to risk much of anything to potentially create a deeper relationship with the strangers who are coming to be our guests. I would encourage each of you to be willing to put yourself out there and to realize that the people that are coming to stay in our building are simply friends that you have not yet met and that there is a great reward for treating them how you would like to be treated yourself. The final thing that we can learn from Rahab in our scripture today is that even though she is from a different culture and from a different country, that Rahab believes in the God of Israel. Just because someone is a different color or because they come from somewhere else or they have a different culture does not mean that they are not a true follower of Jesus. Now today is World Communion Sunday, the day that we remember and commemorate that communion is not just celebrated among Christians right here in Plainfield Township, Michigan, but that communion is being celebrated today in churches throughout the United States, indeed throughout the world. Today there are Korean Presbyterians celebrating communion. There are Russian Christians celebrating communion. There is communion being taken in Africa, Jamaica, Brazil, Colombia, and New Zealand. Christ and the message of self-sacrificial love is so much, much bigger than the Presbyterian Church USA, USA or American Christianity with all its denominational variations from Catholic to Protestant. Today, as you partake of communion and we remember that the communion that is being taken around the world, we are getting just the tiniest taste of what heaven will be like. In heaven, there will be people from all different cultures and countries with theological viewpoints that are varied and some of which will be much different than ours. They will speak different languages from us and even sing songs that we have never heard before. And all of this wonderful diversity of people and culture and language is all something that gives glory to God. It is not something to be afraid of, but something to celebrate and to rejoice in. It is a good and wonderful thing that our God is so much bigger than any human boundary or definition can contain. So, in conclusion, today in our lesson about the foreigner Rahab, it is important for us to remember to go beyond our fear of the other, our fear of the stranger, and to offer them our best hospitality. It is good for us to take a risk to build a relationship that will strengthen our faith and change our lives for the better. But most importantly, 
We must remember that our God is so much bigger than any human culture or any people group. And that the diversity that we celebrate on World Communion Sunday is just a taste of the extreme joy that awaits for us in heaven. So be it, my friends. Amen. Amen.